If you haven't been living under a rock, you've surely heard of the new image generation model that everyone is talking about, Flux. It's so good that people are even calling it a possible contender to mid-journey. With over 12 billion parameters, there's not a lot that Flux can't do. Or can it? If you've been using Flux a lot, you may have started to realize there are certain limitations with what it can generate, particularly when referring to art styles, famous personalities, and other types of images that it refuses to produce. Probably initially done as a security measure, these lockdowns can severely limit the creativity that can be achieved with Flux. To address this, like with Stable Diffusion, you can create LoRa's or fine tunes by injecting training data with the missing information into the model, allowing you to generate images based on what you want as long as you've provided the training data. Today we're going to explore an easy way to generate your own LoRa using online tools, download it and use it on Comfy UI. If you're interested in creating a LoRa on your own hardware using one of the tools like Simple Tuner or AI Toolkit, Please let me know in the comment section below and I will create a video specifically for that for advanced users. However, today's video is meant to be broad, easy to understand and explain concepts for everybody. Now before we begin, let's have a quick refresher on what is the difference between a LoRa and a fine tune. Both are different techniques to customize and train models. In both situations, you'll need to prepare a set of images with the subject, art style, or concept that you're training, ideally have some captions that explain what's happening in those images and run them through a training software. The main difference is that Allura is a standalone file that can be used with the base model or a variation of the model. Previously in Stable Diffusion, if you trained Allura, you could use it with the base Stable Diffusion or any fine tune. Fine Tune, on the other hand, is an all-in-one model that contains the training data and the base model all in one. Typically, you would use Fine Tunes for bigger batches of data or if you wanted better results because the training data would be injected at an earlier stage of the image generation process, resulting in better understanding and better output. However, a lot of the times, Allura was often good enough, particularly with anime images. Today, we're going to explore how to do Allura, and based on the results that I've seen, you may not even need to explore Fine Tuning. I'm Endangered AI, and let's get plugged in. So here we are on the Replicate page. The link is down in the description below. And probably the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is set up a payment method over here in pricing. Now, don't worry, it's not very expensive to train your own LoRa. It should cost anywhere between two and $10, depending on the parameters and the training time that you put in. From what I've seen, uh, relatively basic training with about 20 images shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. Obviously, the more images, the more captions you have, the longer that will take. Okay, so here we are on the Replicate training page, and we're going to attempt two trainings today. One of myself and one of Final Fantasy character styles. This way we can show what are the different things that we need to do when training a face or a person and how the process varies when you're training a style. So the first thing you're going to want to do before anything is put together a bunch of images that you're going to use as your training data. Here I have a whole bunch of screenshots of myself and here are a whole bunch of Final Fantasy 7 images that I've collected from the internet. Once you've done that, head on over to the Replicate training page Link is down below in the description. And let's go through each of the fields and parameters to understand what everything does. Up here at the top, we've got destination. This is going to be the name of the model. In this case, let's call it endangered AI person and click create new model. This will create a allocation in replicate where the model will be stored. Next, we've got the input images. Now this is really important because there's a couple of ways that you can upload the images which can significantly affect your training. If we come back here to the training images, we're going to start with the endangered AI folder. We're going to go ahead and zip it and this will be the file that we upload. Now it's important to note that in here we have only images. Further down on the page, you'll see this auto caption flag. To successfully train a LoRa model, you need to include the training images, as well as text writing explaining what is in each image. Replicate uses this vision model called Lava 1.5 billion, and it does its best to explain what is happening in the image. However, if you want to take a fine tooth comb and actually caption the images yourself, because there are certain things that you want to reference or you want to explicitly point out certain elements, styles or features in the images, you can do that by creating a text file for each image included here. So for example, for image 01, I would create I would create a new text file and simply describe what are the key elements in the image that are important to me. So in this case, 
let's assume that Lava would describe a brown male with a beard and glasses. If that's not good enough for us, we might want to specify, for example, the brand of the glasses. Let's say that these are Armani glasses. So if we look at this description, we can see here some elements that I've put in that may not have been included in the model. For example, I've specified the brand of the glasses and I've also specified a light beard. While the lava model may pick up on the beard, it may not describe it in the way that we want. Let's say, for example, in our training images, we have different lengths of beard and we want to be able to specify that length in the model when we're doing the inference. This is the opportunity to do that. Once you've done that, you go ahead and save the file as the exact same name as the image file. In this case, it will be 01.txt. That way, when we zip everything together and we upload it to the trainer, it knows which caption belongs to which image. However, for today, we're just going to use the auto captioning, but I wanted to explain what the manual captioning process is like in case you wanted to try it out. So if we come back here and we grab our zip file, let's go ahead and upload it. If we are not including manual captions, you might be wondering how do we reference the character or component in the images that we're training on? This is where trigger word comes in. This is effectively what token are you assigning to the primary element of the image? In this case, it's a person. So we will just use X E A I X. Typically you want to use something that is not typically found in the English language, so it doesn't conflict with any other concepts that exist within the model. That way, when you reference, in this case, X E A I X, it can find the training images that we've uploaded as well as its relationships with everything else in the model. Then as we come down, we've got auto captions. So these again are the captions that will be created by Lava. Now, if you're not captioning manually, that doesn't mean you don't have control over how the captions appear as there's also this auto caption prefix and suffix. And this is an opportunity, again, for you to add specific elements that are present across all images that you want the model to train upon. So in this case, just to make sure that it references a man, we can say a man of Indian descent. So now it will include on every caption, a man of Indian descent, the trigger word, and then whatever the caption is. And then same thing for the suffix. This is exactly the same as prefix, but it takes whatever you put in here and puts it at the end. As we come down here to number of steps, this is the number of steps that the model will train itself on the data. Typically more is better, but not always. Overdoing it can result in a phenomenon called overtraining, where the model or the LoRa takes a little too much influence from what you're training and it can result in images with artifacts or it trying to forcibly put elements from the training images in places where they shouldn't be. For the purposes of this experimentation, we're just going to leave it at the default at a thousand as it sits well within the training range. However, as I said, depending on the result of your training, you may want to come back and increase the steps if you feel it's not picked up the concepts aggressively enough or reduce it if you're seeing too much artifacting coming in from the training images. Learning rate, this is how much the model learns at each step. And again, you can mess around with this in conjunction with the steps. You might want to, for example, increase the learning rate, but decrease the number of steps or vice versa. These can have different results in what the model finally outputs. And again, some experimentation will be required to see how these parameters affect the final model. And finally, we have here LoRa rank. The description here says that it needs to be a number that is 16, 32, 64, or 128, and that higher ranks take longer to train, but capture more complex features. So this will be especially useful if you have images with a lot of information, a lot of components, a lot of intricacy, and your caption captures that. Just to give an example, let's find an image with a bit of complexity. Let's grab something like this, where there's a lot going on in the image. We have the fact that it appears to be a cafe, it's nighttime, we've got the neon lights, then we've got the things happening inside the cafe, where we've got a person, we've got the furniture, which appears to be this kind of garden furniture style, we've got some vending machines. So this would be an opportunity to increase the LoRa rank 
as long as our caption captures all of these elements in the image. So the training time took approximately 20 minutes. It actually was a little bit shorter than what I expected. I had said 30 minutes. Both of these trainings completed in 19 minutes. So let's go have a look at them. Now, if you want to access the models, head on over to your dashboard up here, click on models, and all the models that you've trained should be here. I also did the Final Fantasy VII style one just so that we're not wasting time. We're gonna try them both out now. So if we jump into the first one, let's prompt up Selfie in Paris. So we're gonna use our token, uh, Selfie of X-E-A-I-X -E -I in Paris. And let's see what we get. So we can see here, it's starting the process, loading in the LoRa, and we should have the image momentarily. <laughs> well, I definitely have a bit more hair than uh, I typically do, but besides that, th that image is actually fantastic. I am thoroughly impressed. I mean, look, look at this. It's even picked up here the diffraction you get from glasses. Now, uh, I, I will say it is a little extreme. Uh, it doesn't typically look like that, but these results are better than anything I've ever been able to do with stable diffusion. Even the hair, even though it's given me a little bit more than what I usually have, that is the texture of my hair when it's frizzled. Uh, let's, let's try this again. Let's, let's have another go and see what we can get. So this is what I was referring to about not even needing to fine tune. This LoRa is giving me better results than anything I've ever been able to achieve with SDXL fine tuning. Here we go. Uh, this is another fantastic image. It's not perfect, but it's 90, 95% of the way there. I could show this to people and they, they would not be able to recognize that it's AI unless they start to dig in deep. It's got the, the coloring of my beard perfectly and uh, all the major facial expressions. This is actually impressive. Okay, let's try out the uh, Final Fantasy one. Let's see if we're able to get that style transposition over. Let's go back to our dashboard models and grab the FFI style. So let's try blonde woman in FFI style. Let's make it a simple prompt first. Okay, it's not quite what I had in mind. It doesn't quite get that PS1 style, but it kind of does. This is absolutely fascinating. It's like an upscaled model of what Final Fantasy VII remasters should look like. If I'm not, yeah, let's, let's take this a step further. Let's, uh, this is fun. This is uh, dangerous. Um, selfie in Paris of large black haired man. Okay. Not quite as good as what we had before. There's some funny business happening here. The background is realistic whereas the main character is very much an anime style a really cool looking anime style again it's got a lot of those facets from that final fantasy 7 style similar to what we saw in the previous image just with a bit more anime style let's let's make this here this is where doing some manual captioning can come in handy because we let the auto captioner run we also don't know what or how it's captioned the images if you do it manually, you can have an idea of what you've used to tell the image what is what, and then you can use that in your prompts to get exactly what you want. So here, you know, we've thrown in 3D again. It is giving us a bit more of a 3D look, but the background is still very realistic and the image still very much looks, uh, it has a bit of a 3D look, looks like a cell shaded 3D anime style. So I would say that the performance here is maybe not as good as the training of myself. Uh, again, we only picked out 20 images. There was a lot going on in them and perhaps with better captioning, we could get better results. So what happens if we now want to download these LoRa's and use them in Comfy UI? Let's go ahead and do that now. So unfortunately, don't be me. Earlier when we were going through the training parameters, there is a field here that is Hugging Face Repo ID and Hugging Face Token. We had skipped those over. And if you want to download the model for use with Comfy UI, that is actually the easiest way to do it. So if you want to do it the way that you would do it, head on over to Hugging Face, log in, head on over to the top right menu, click on new model, 
and go ahead and create the model here. In this case, we are going to do e AI person. You can choose to make it public or private and then go ahead and create it. Once it's done, you'll have a allocation for the model here, uh, but there's nothing there. However, we are going to grab this URL over here, drop it into the repo ID, then head back over to Hugging Face, go to Settings, Access Tokens, create a new token, give it a name. We're going to want to give it right capabilities as we are writing a model onto it. So give a name to the token. In this case, we're going to call it replicate and go ahead and create the token. Once you've done that, copy it into hugging face token and then go ahead and create the training. Unfortunately, because I did not do that, the model is not available for me to download and test out on Comfy UI right now. However, if you are interested in seeing the results, what I was planning to do in this part of the video is try and combine the two LoRa's to create Final Fantasy style images of myself. If you are interested in checking out those results, I will be posting the workflow on my Patreon as well as the result images on my Discord and my blog. So like, subscribe, Click the bell icon if you want to have a look at those images. I'll create a post here on YouTube when I've done some of those experiments if you want to check out the results. Finally, if you found this video helpful, please head on over to my Patreon and check it out. Your support there makes it absolutely invaluable in creating these videos.